All right, guys, again, uh, we're here with Peter Sermon, our defensive coordinator. If you could let me know if you'd like to ask a question, please put it in the chat, and I'll just go ahead and call on you in the order that I get those chats. testing your technology. Jake Curtis, you're first. First que first up, Jake. Uh, go ahead, question for Coach Sermon. Yeah, Peter. Uh, what? How is different coaching now for preparing for this season as, it would, as, as opposed to what it would be if it were a regular typical season? Well, Jake, I think it's more about uh, um, the difference in preparation time that we've had uh, as a staff uh, and the you know, I think the, the 10 practices we lost uh, in spring ball, um, and then a little bit of that, some of those, some of those younger players that um, the, the spring was gonna be a, a, a big evaluation tool for them. Um, so it's really just the, the abbreviated time we've had together as a staff and, as, and uh, you know, with the defense, that's, um, you know, we're trying to be a little more mindful of what we're putting in, um, the level of, um, the level of, um, the, the detail has to be there, uh, but with with 25 practices and in, in, uh, you know a shorter season, we're having to be really smart with what we're we're, we're detailing out and, and what we're asking the kids to get done um, in the last you know in the first two weeks of uh, of camp. Safe to say, a little bit a uh, little less sophisticated. It will be. It will be. You know, thankfully we have a lot of veteran guys coming back, um, and the system which we run, you know, is pretty multiple in what we do. So uh, the baseline is pretty sophisticated, um, but with uh, adding some new guys into uh, into the system, um, we have to make sure that, that everybody's coming along with it, not just the guys that have been in here for, you know, two, three years. Okay, Jake, anything else for now? That, that's good for now. Okay, uh, Trace Travers from Rivals. No way, what's up? I didn't even know it was you because your hair. Oh, sorry about Grace, that. Grace, are you there? Yeah, sorry, I went a little haywire okay. here. Um, Thank you. And please put your phone on mute if you're not asking a question. Hold on, guys. If you are on, if you are not asking a question, please put your Zoom on mute. All right, Jasper. Take care and I see you. Jasper, please put your phone on mute. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Go ahead, Trace. Trace, we're missing you. We're going to skip you for now. Lorenzo, are you ready? Yeah, just uh, move on. I'll come back. Okay, Lorenzo, are you ready? Yes, sir. Hope you, uh, you can hear me okay. Yep. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. So, Coach, so, um, so two practices in, but – have, what newcomers have stood out so far during these two practices? Uh, um, Lorenzo, we're Lane having a little problem with your question, and also we're just one just one practice in. They're working out later today, but go ahead if you're ready again. Okay, if not, we'll move on to Rusty Simmons. Yeah, Coach, I'll, I'll just ask a, a super general question about uh, kind of your expectations for the defense this season. Well, the expectations of the defense okay. is, is uh, continuing to improve. Uh, I think we've, we've played really hard in the past, um, and I think uh, you know, the expectation is we'll continue to do that. Um, as guys have been in the system, you expect uh, you know, that, that standard not to change and, and the skill level uh, to continue to get better. You know, I think consistently we can get after the quarterback um, you know, uh, a little bit better and impact uh, the throw game a little bit. And then we have to continue to, to stress takeaways. And then the other one I was going to ask, Coach, is about Elijah Hicks. Um, obviously, we, we've seen what he does on the field, but I was going to ask you also about him off the field and, and kind of how he's using his platform, what, what you think about what he's doing right now. Elijah is a, is a great representative of what Cal football is and what it can be. Um, as a player, he's a very talented player. Uh, as a as a teammate in the locker room, uh, people respect him. Uh, he's respected by other people. He is a guy that his work ethic is the barometer of our players on defense. I'll talk to some young guys, and it's a 
they'll tell me, hey, coach, I've been working out with Elijah, which is instant credibility of, you know, as him as the as the barometer, as a gold standard, when when guys are working out with him, uh, that knows, you know, the guys know and, and the staff knows that uh, what type of work they're doing and, and how they're handling themselves. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jackson Moore from 24-7. Yes, uh, Coach, um, Coach Wilcox told us a bit yesterday about uh, the differences with the protocols you guys are working with from his perspective uh, in terms of working with the defense and insulation. Can you describe just how these early practices are different uh, than normal? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, once they get, you know, in the concourse. So right now we're having uh, our position meetings outdoors, essentially, in, in the concourse. So uh, we have a lot of meeting rooms adjacent to one another. Um, so that's you know, in terms of just the, the teaching progression, uh, that's a little bit different. Usually you have your own space, uh, whiteboard, you have your, um, your doc cam and, and some different tools that, that uh, you know, some of us use for, um, you know, some of the, the teaching progression. Uh, but once the guys have gotten into the, into the protocol and we get on the field, um, you know, we're not, you know, we're, we're continuing to, to tackle and get off blocks and, and, and do all those same things, um, you know, from a time perspective in terms of, you know, they don't, you know, we're trying to minimize, you know, doing this for, you know, 15 minutes at a time. So uh, we've been mindful with that, but, uh, you know, starting yesterday with our install, it's really um, kind of full speed ahead, you know, in terms of how we space each other, you know, we have social distancing in the meeting room in the concourse, but other than that, it's, you know, we just got to get to coaching football. Thank you. Hey, uh, David Bush from Bear Insider. Hi, Coach. Um, I just wonder, uh, uh, Tevin Paul's uh, leaving was kind of a surprise. Now, does that, uh, would that cause you to shift any people to different positions? Uh, will, will somebody else uh, suddenly take a more prominent role? Well, we have we have a lot of guys that that are playing that outside linebacker position. Um, you know, some some guys that were excited about their development. Uh, you know, Cam Good has been a, a consistent performer. A lot of big plays. You know, I know uh, statistically he played well last year, um, and he's a guy that that uh, can rush the quarterback, play in space. And, you know, he's continuing to improve playing on the line of scrimmage. Is that you know that six nine technique? Uh, Braxton Croto is a is a player that that we know works extremely hard. He is developed physically. Uh, he is uh, a very uh, conscientious player in terms of uh, in the weight room. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's gotten bigger and stronger. And uh, Braxton's have the opportunity uh, for, for some increased opportunities for sure. And just one other thing. Uh, in the spring, we talked a lot about that new hybrid position, uh, safety, outside linebacker. Given the limited uh, practice time you have, are you going to be able to implement that as much as you wanted to? You know, probably not as much as, as we wanted to, uh, David. You know, it's, uh, you know, for instance, we had, you know, we're on the field for about an hour and 15 minutes, I think, yesterday. Um, so just the, the lack of reps, um, we're not going to be able to get everything that we wanted to get in. Um, again, so uh, not only are we modifying uh, some of the personnel groupings, we're also modifying some of the install volume. Um, so the things that that we know uh, need to be in, um, we're we're spending a lot of time on that. And then with the modified schedule in terms of opponents, you know, there's there were things that we carried specifically for certain opponents. Um, you know, so some of those things with just the north, um, you know, in the north continuing to take shape with a couple new offensive coordinators, new head coach. You know, so there's some things that, that we feel uh, we can carry versus any uh, any personnel groupings, any kind of offensive philosophy. And then, you know, once, uh, you know, the new coordinators kind of show uh, what direction they're going, we'll have some things that we'll probably need to, to, to ramp up a little bit later in the season. Thanks. Okay, Lorenzo Reyna, I think you're ready now from 24-7. Lorenzo, we can't hear you if you're talking. Let, let's move on for now to Trace Travers. Yes, okay, uh, hope Cal. this works. How much do you think that helps? Go, go ahead, Lorenzo. Lorenzo, go ahead. Coach, can you hear me now? Yes. Can you, can you hear me? 
Okay. So, okay. You know what, Lorenzo? We're going to have to move on. Sorry. Trace Travers next. Okay. Hope this works. Um, you guys have a fairly young defensive line right now. They're so four DeAndre freshmen Johnson is back up. for another year. Go ahead, Trace. I'm going to chat. A, I'm four a true freshmen who make up half of your uh, defensive line scholarship players. How do you kind of get those guys acclimated as quickly as you're going to have to this year? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, Coach AB's got a huge – uh, a challenge ahead of them, you know, but uh, we feel good about, you know, some of the skills they're bringing in, um, you know, especially those, you know, the young guys have great size and we're going to be able to, to develop them, you know, in these settings, they're going to have to develop in uh, different spacings and odd and even spacings. Um, but at the same time, we're going to have to try to keep, create as much consistency, um, you know, when, when we're teaching them what they need to do in odd, what they need to do in even, and a lot of our defense is going to be predicated on uh, the development of those younger defensive linemen. So, uh, like I said, we've we've been real mindful with uh, what we've installed uh, yesterday, and we're we're adding a little bit of that today. Um, and we have some different spacings down, and we're going to see how those young guys, uh, first of all, physically, you know, what they're capable of, and then mentally, as we get. Uh, more installation is, um, you know, what, what's going to be the limiting factor for them? Is it going to be just the effort uh, and being in shape or is the limiting factor going to be, you know, if we put too much defense in, you know, we're going to see a, a, a stunt in their, um, in their production. So uh, AB, I think is as fine a D line coach in America. So we're going to lean heavily on him, on his development and then his input on how much more we put on those young players and, and what we think they're capable of holding. Okay, we've got time for a couple more. Jake Curtis, question for Coach. Yeah, Coach, um, the, the loss of Luke, how does that affect things? Might Brett Johnson be able to play two positions there, or, or what might you do? Yeah, you know, Luke was uh, a very instrumental. You know, he played multiple positions for us, uh, was a very consistent performer. Um, you know, it's uh, very unfortunate that, uh, you know, he developed at Cal. Um, has some great football um, and really gave us everything that he had. And it's very unfortunate that uh, uh, it played out the, the way it did, that he's um, playing for somebody else. But like anything, there's more opportunities for guys in the roster. Uh, Brett showed flashes last year. Brett continued to improve last year um, in the weight room. You know, even through the summer, it's been, uh, you know, we haven't had the consistency that we typically have, but but Brett's a very talented player, and he's going to he's going to have to play multiple positions uh, like, you know, really all of our veteran players have to play two, um, you know, almost two and a half positions. We're going to try to protect some of the newcomers and, and have them get good at one before we move on to multiple positions. But, uh, you know, we're excited about Brett, you know, J.H. Tevis, you know, he's another guy that can play multiple positions. Uh, Z plays multiple positions and uh, Maldonado. So all those guys are, are doing a lot. Just real quick, when you say guy might play two and a half positions, what, what is a half position? Well, sometimes, you know, in, in some of these rotations, you know, you don't have a, you don't, we might not have a third, you know, a, a true three at a position. Um, so in, in effort, you know, you, you, you put in a first backup and some of those guys have to play, you know, you can play the, you know, the right side of the defensive line. So it's not their, it's not a position that's their primary or their second position, but you know, if, if we're playing a game and there's a few injuries, you know, we can't play with can't play with 10. So some of those guys have to have enough wherewithal that they can they can survive a couple a couple series in a position that not typically their home. Thanks. Okay, I'm gonna ask. We got two more here for you, Coach. We'll let you go. Uh, I'm gonna ask for Lorenzo. His question is about Zionde Johnson. How much does it ha help having a veteran presence like that on the defensive line, especially with the young guys coming in? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, Z is a veteran and he's talented. Um, so the, the the veteran thing is something that we really appreciate as a coaching staff. Uh, but what gets us really excited is is uh, talent. And he's a talented player. Um, he is um, the, the dad of the group now in terms of, uh, you know, I think he's been here longer than I think every coach on staff. So uh, we're, we're excited about his um, his attitude, you know, he was out there yesterday. He's still, 
Um, he he's out there with a, a big old smile on his face and his enthusiasm is something that's not lost. Um, and I think sometimes, you know, when you've been um, at a school for a while, it's uh, you get a little bit in the, you know, I've been here for a long time. You look like, a, you know, if you go watch an NFL practice, some of the vets run around a little bit different than some of the younger players. But uh, Z's personality is one of a, of a youthful younger player and, and uh, his talent and his experience are, are both um, are all really important to us. Okay, final question, Jasper Sundin from the Daily Cal. Hey, Coach, and sorry, everyone, for being a little too liberal with my mute button there. Um, Coach, real quick, you talked a little bit about freshmen on the defensive line. I know you've only had a couple practices in spring and uh, this week, but are, are there any freshmen or younger players that you're already getting excited about or you feel like um, have showed some promise? Well, I know that's uh... – it's we always want to and uh, we always want to talk about the newcomers, um, but I am I am holding uh, judgment on all these new players. You know, like I said, there's some of them were here um, for spring, you know, for four practices, but you know that was uh, unfortunately a long time ago. So uh, especially the the position more specifically on the defensive line, that's a position that uh, you know when the pads come on, you know it's a lot easier to for those guys to exhibit what they can. Um, do and, and you know where some of their deficiencies are. So I'm going to hold uh, hold judgment for some of those those newcomers and, and give you a more thorough and mindful answer uh, as we get a little bit later in camp. Okay, uh, absolutely. Oh, sorry, jo yes. Jasper. Do you have a final follow up? Um, just real short, Coach. What are you excited most about this season after returning, or for, for this season after returning to practice? I'm more excited. I'm most excited about the the continued trajectory of Cal football. You know, we have good players. We're recruiting our tails off. Uh, we really feel good about um, the the reception of the guys that we're recruiting, even currently. I mean, Cal football is is uh, on the rise, and we feel, um, you know, we have an opportunity to make a significant step, um, you know, of getting where we want the program to be. And this is the necessary um, path to do it. Go out there and, and continue to, to play at a very high level, um, be smart, tough football program and continue to recruit and develop our players. Okay. Everybody good. All right. Thanks a lot, Pete. Really guys. appreciate it. Have a great weekend. Y'all be safe. Okay. Bye-bye.